Welcome to Hope Channel Kenya. Welcome to uh, Testimony Time. Um, today with me in the studio is a young lady called Letty. Letty is uh, a student of Nairobi University. She's a call porter and a member of uh, New Life SDA Church. Before we go on uh, with our testimony today, we'll have a short sharing. So let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your holy name. We worship you this morning. We magnify you today. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness and your mercies. We acknowledge your greatness, you who created the universe. We acknowledge your loving kindness. We acknowledge your love for us, O oh Lord our God, that you have called us out of the kingdom of darkness into your marvelous light. You have given us opportunity to serve you. We are called by your name and you've allowed us to call upon your name, O oh Lord our God, at any time of day or night. We bless your name. Thank you, Father, for the privilege of fellowshipping with our viewer today. Thank you. Forgive our sins and our trespasses, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, dear viewer, uh, today we will share from the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. This the book of Genesis, chapter 18 and 19. But you will read for yourselves. I will pick bits from these two chapters. Now, at this time, God decided to go and visit Abraham. And uh, he has a chat with Abraham. And uh, Abraham welcomes the Lord and offers them. He says the Lord and it says them. Just like at creation. It says God created and he says it says us. So the same scenario appears in this chapter 18 of God and their three people. And uh, um, after God has chatted with Abraham and at the end of the chat he blesses Abraham by telling him that Sarah was going to have a baby. The Lord makes out to leave. He is leaving Abraham. But you know the Lord is friends with Abraham. He talks to Abraham. They talk, they talk like friends. And the Lord says, hey, should I hide? Should I hide what I'm about to do from Abraham? He says, okay, um, verse 16 and 17 in uh, chapter 18. It says, then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham? what I am doing. And so again, I will paraphrase because of time. The Lord tells Abraham that he has heard the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah. Their wickedness, their wickedness has reached the ears of the Lord. And he says he's come down for, by himself to come and see if it was so. And he tells Abraham what he's going about to do about Sodom and Gomorrah and their wickedness. And Abraham, when he had left his country, when God called him out to go, he came out with his nephew. 
And when God had blessed them so much, the land could not contain them with the blessings that God had given them. So he asked his nephew Lot to choose where he would go. And Lot chose to go to the valley that would look very good, that was fertile and look good to look at. And that was the valley of Sodom and Gomorrah. And now the wickedness of the place had was was beyond beyond um, what God could bear. And so the Lord has come down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham begins to intercede to plead with God for Sodom and Gomorrah because uh, uh, his nephew Lot is in it with his family. Anyway, so he pleads telling God about the numbers as you will read. I've asked you to read for yourselves. Telling him about the numbers and asking God if he would spare if those numbers were there. But those numbers were not there. It comes down up to 10 and still the, uh, there are no 10 righteous people in Sodom. And so the Lord leaves. And, but the Lord sends his angels to go and get Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says in chapter 19, verse 15, when the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. Now the angels had told him to, to take, to ask anybody connected to him, his in-laws, uh, his neighbors, but they thought it was a big joke. So the, angel, the angels tell him to take his daughters and run, get out, get out quickly. Anyway, Lot and his family are still lingering and the angels hold them by the hand and pull them out so that they can get out quickly before the destruction. We are living in such times. God has called us out of the world because this world the wickedness in the world has reached its limit. Jesus is about to come. Everything that God told us would happen, that Jesus told us would happen before his coming has already happened. And Jesus said that this good news of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world and then shall the end come. Do you know that God has made it possible for everyone to hear the gospel of the kingdom. He has emptied those countries that were forbidding the name of Christ to be pronounced. And because of the turmoil in those countries, they've been, they've been literally vomited out into other countries so that they can hear the word of God. Now they are in countries, in nations, where there's freedom to hear the word of God. There used to be a country called USSR, which was the, the, the other most powerful country in the world. And one day we woke up and it was no more. God had, with a mighty hand, dismantled it. In that country, you could not say God. It was forbidden to pray. God dismantled it so that the the, the word of God could now be preached in those countries. God has dismantled the airwaves. Even in Kenya, we used to have only one TV station. 
and radio station called VOK. Do you remember those who are about my age? Now we have so many. And the, the word of God can be preached on television, on radio, all over the world. And people are accepting the Lord Jesus Christ in their bedrooms. And this good news of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations. Then shall the end come. The end is near. And the world's wickedness has gone beyond bounds. Jesus is coming. The Lord is saying, come out of the world. Come out of the world. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Time is up. Jesus is coming. But even if it doesn't come immediately, death is coming. And it could find you unprepared. Give your life to the Lord now. So that whatever happens, first, whether it is death or whether Christ comes, that you be found ready to meet Christ. May the Lord help each and every one of us. Lot was brought out of Sodom and Gomorrah by the angels of the Lord. But he complained he didn't want to go very far. And they had been told not to look back, not to look back. When God has saved you, don't look back. Don't look back. Fix your eyes on Jesus who alone is the author and the finisher of our faith, of, of your faith, of our faith. Don't look at somebody else. Don't look at the pastor. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Read the word of God. Pray and fellowship and share the word of God with others. It is urgent. It is urgent. Christ is coming. Lot's wife was worried about the burning behind them. The things that she had left behind. And she turned and looked and became a pillar of salt. May the Lord help each and every one of us, you and me, not to become a pillar of salt and not to remain in Sodom like, like Lord's in-laws, but to run for our lives, run to Jesus. Only I look at Jesus and you will be saved. May God help you. May God help me and all of us. Make sure you tell your family Make sure you pray for your family, intercede for them to be saved. The Lord will help them. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name for your word. We pray in Jesus' name that if we are reluctant to let go, hold our hands. Do not give up on us. Hold our hands and get us out of Sodom and Gomorrah. May we give our lives to you and may we fix our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Our dear viewer will go on a short break and then we will listen to Letty's uh, testimony. God bless you. Don't go away. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. Letty. Yes. Thank you for making our time to come and share your life with our viewer. So, um, you are a student at uh, Nairobi University. Yes, I am. And you're a call putter. Yes. How did you become a Christian? How did you meet Christ? Growing up, I was not a, a, uh, I was not an Adventist. Mm. I went to Sunday school mm. with my parents and my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point when I came back to school, my mother was in the Adventist church. Mm -hmm. So we went there briefly and we went back to school. Mm -hmm. And then after some, at, uh, like a year or so later, she went back to, the, to her former church. Yes. But I remained in the Adventist church. Mm -hmm. But I would, uh, I would go to church only for the, for the 11, for the mid-morning session. 
not in the other words for the salmon only yes mm -hmm. for the salmon then afternoon i would find something to do mm -hmm. like i would be with my friends and maybe other other responsibilities i had not met christ to know the essence mm -hmm. of keeping the sabbath fully mm -hmm. you were not interested in the things of god I didn't find it interesting mm -hmm. going that early to do lesson discussion and even Bible study in the afternoon. Because you found them boring. Yeah, growing up I was we were not in a like a, a Bible reading home. We'd only mm -hmm. read it when we go to church on Sunday. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So after high school I I went to I was staying in Ivasha. Yes. So I went to to, to the Adventist church. The, my first Adventist church was site. So I worshipped there until the point that I got baptized. Um, so uh, um, your first encounter with Christ was at that in Naivasha? Yes, in Naivasha. Uh -huh. That is when I became gradually, I started becoming consistent. Gradually I adjusted my timings for coming to church. So that now I was attending even the lesson discussion. And at some point they appointed me as the, the English lesson class teacher for the youth. So when you met Christ, your life changed. Yes, my life changed. From being a churchgoer mm -hmm. to a Christian who is keen on what's going on. Yes, and would feel very bad if I was late. For would the would feel bad. Yes, I would feel like Sabbath is not complete without the morning, the devotion plus mm. the lesson discussion. Because the, it's during lesson discussion. Why, why, why would you say that? Because I would, I would miss out. You yeah. see, when we go for... Why do you like the lesson discussion? I like it because what I've studied during the week, mm. I'm able to share with others and you find that these are the people's point of view, mm. you compare with yours and you become enriched. Amen. Yes. So it's a Bible study. It's a Bible study. Amen. Yes. And so you became interested in, in this morning Bible study called the lesson study. Yes. Amen. Amen. And uh, you got interested in coming early. Early, very early. Because you wanted to be there yes. for everything. Yes. Oh, I didn't want to miss anything. Amen. amen. And, and that's why at some point I became the the Sabbath school superintendent for Naivasha Church, uh -huh. because I, don't, I was consistently there, unless mm -hmm. when I'm out of town. So I was able to work for the Lord Amen. as a Sabbath school superintendent. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Mm. Okay. So in your Christian life, what is your m most memorable encounter with the Lord? My most, I have, I have not, not one. I know. Yes. <laughs> now, pick one and, and tell us, share with us. Well, with regard to my schooling, the most memorable time is when I was so sure I would not do exams because I had not cleared my school fees. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an exam card. Mm -hmm. To the last week when now Monday exams are starting. Mm -hmm. And then I prayed about it, I shared with sisters and other friends, and they promised to be praying with me. Amen. And when you I went, prayed and asked others to pray. Yes. Like Daniel with yes. his friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. I asked them to stand in the gap Amen. because I really wanted to do the exams. I prepared for the exams by faith, mm -hmm. hoping to do them. And then when we went to college the following week, the exam week, mm -hmm. the portals weren't working. Everybody was complaining that the portals were not working, which means nobody could print their exam cards. So what are these portals? The portals are, uh, like when you become a student, when you register, mm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a website for the university where you have like a, your student account, where they post your results, you have your details, you have your exams results posted there. Mm. So whenever you want to do exams, you have to go and print an exam card. Mm -hmm. And it can only be done through your individual portal. So, in other words, your your IT system jammed. Yes, uh -huh. for everyone. Mm -hmm. So there was no one who could print. Only those who had printed much earlier before we went into session. How does this affect you? So this I was like, I was, if you feel, could this be the Lord working? As in you feel like there's some excitement and you keep hoping. 
God switched it off for you. <laughs> yes. So that everyone could do exams. Mm -hmm. Everyone could do exams. Without their exam card. Yes. Because now the lecturers couldn't ask you for the exam card because they knew that the system was not working. Amen. Yes. And so you were able to do exams. They did the exams and the portal started working at the last day of exams when you're done. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> Yes, so you I know, finished there's, my exam. there's nothing too small for yeah. the Lord. There's nothing too small for the Lord. And there's nothing too hard for Him either. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So I was, very, I was very overjoyed to share the testimony with the people who were praying with me, and they were like, Praise they also feel encouraged. The Lord. Because at least the Lord had. Up to last minute, you didn't know what was going to happen. No, I was not sure. Mm. Because you, you go home and you're like, what if tomorrow they're working and now you're, you have to bring your exam card? Yeah. But I also thank the Lord that during that week, is when again I managed to clear the mm -hmm. balance. Amen. So at the end so of the... So the Lord also provided... Yes, the Lord also provided the resources. That you clear your fees. Yes. Amen. And so the portals reopened and I registered my unit. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Yes. That's a wonderful testimony. Tell us another one. Another one is... Uh, I am one of VBS volunteers. With a, with what a, is BVS? You know, our viewer may VBS not know VBS is Vacation Bible School. Okay. And we have it mostly in April for the children. It's uh -huh. a whole week of Bible study for children. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. So most of our churches, we have it. Mm -hmm. So that the children are kept busy in a positive way during their holidays. Amen. Yes. Amen. So I'm part of a group. And this is available in every church? For the church, not all of them, yeah. because there are churches that do not have the resources mm -hmm. and they may not also have the staff mm -hmm. who will commit to be with the children for a whole week. So you decided to be a volunteer? Yes, mm -hmm. with the Footprints Children Ministries. That's a, a, a ministry? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a ministry. Mm -hmm. And it, it comprises of... Uh, all those who have a passion for children mm -hmm. and we volunteer especially to churches with need and mm -hmm. areas with need mm -hmm. because when you look around you find that VBS I'm a vacation Bible school mostly mm -hmm. is in our city churches because there are resources yes and uh, they're exposed to the need to have the children do this mm -hmm. but when you go out to the rural areas some a few churches are just learning the importance of this mm -hmm. so they still do not have the, the manpower or they, they still do not have the teachers to do this. Mm. So Could that also be because in the rural areas, children are kept too busy some other ways? Perhaps in the farmlands or doing other mm. things. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now, even in the, even in the town churches, the churches that do not have those who would commit for the children, mm -hmm. or they want to be trained. So we train as we volunteer. We come to your church, we go through the VBS with the teachers, because yes. each church has children's teachers. Mm -hmm. So we also train them. So that so, the next one, they're able to do it. So you volunteered. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell I us. I volunteered. So we were to go to, we had two missions, mm -hmm. back to back for two weeks. There was in Kisi and then in Konza. Mm -hmm. And the, our leader, <coughs> our leader asked us for, for how many would be available. Because some of us are working, mm -hmm. a big, uh, quite a number of students like me. So she was like, how many of us would be available for the two weeks or a week? Then I thought about it for some days. I was like, should I go for both of them? Should I go for one? Because again, I had to look for my source of livelihood. I would pay my house and other needs. Mm. Then I prayed about it and a voice, which I believe is God, mm. impressed upon my heart to volunteer for both of them. Amen. Then before I committed to going for the, for the two weeks, mm -hmm. I prayed and told the Lord that I am committing these two weeks to your service, mm. and I do not know where I would get how to pay for my house. Mm. But I'm trusting that you'll take care of everything. Amen. Yes. So I volunteered and told them I'll be available for the two weeks. And not we were, knowing where <laughs> your rent was going to come from. <laughs> no. Then we went to Kisi for the whole week. It was a blessing. Mm. We had so many children who turned up, and the teachers were amazing. So we mm. went through the whole week with them. And we had to travel on Saturday night mm. because on, the, on Sunday morning, on Sunday afternoon, we were going to Konza in mm. Machakos. Mm. So as we left, 
by the time we were, we were you mean traveling now traveling, from yes. Kisi from Kisi uh, after, after the program Kisi. yes uh -huh. after we had to travel in the evening going coming back to Nairobi so that you pack your bags for Konza mm -hmm. yes so our, our part of, we got appreciation from Kisi they were like it was like a gratitude mm. for having been being with their children for the whole week mm -hmm. and I was able to get enough for my rent. And it was, uh, they, they said thanks to you in the form yeah. of cash. Yeah, in form of cash, which uh -huh. we did not know. Because when you go for, for these missions, that is never a part of, like, you, you don't go there expecting anything. No. We just go there for the service of the Lord. Amen. So this was a surprise. Mm. So that is what the Lord had planned. So I was able to clear my house rent. And had surplus. Wow. Yes. So the Lord took care of your the business Lord as you took care yes. of his business. Yes. And that is, I confirmed when he says, when we're told that when you're, you do the business of the Lord, he does yours. Amen. So we finished and we went to Konza. Amen. Very smoothly. Those two weeks were smoothly and they were blessing. Amen. Yes. Mm. That's wonderful. Yeah. You want to share another one? <laughs> another one is a. Uh, Part of, again, an answered prayer is that I pray to the Lord to, to link me up with a Bible study group. Yes. So there's a Bible study group called Bible Research Center. We meet every Wednesday in town, Palais Hotel, mm -hmm. from 5.30. Like today, we'll be meeting in the evening at, from 5.30 to 7.30 for Bible study. But apart from Bible study, we also go for missions. Mm -hmm. So last year in December, we were going to Mumias. Mm -hmm. We minister to... Other churches. Yes. To, we, we worship with other churches. Yes. So we, we had a whole week of Bible study with th those, those, churches. those churches, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we went, on the day of travel, our, our bus was late. We were going via Guardian. Mm -hmm. So we left at around 10. So it was really late. By the time we were getting almost to Kapsabet, all of a sudden the bus stopped. Mm -hmm. And it was, the tires were smoking. Uh-oh. The driver was saying, I do not know what is happening. I do not know why this is happening. So we were like 23 of us in the bus apart from the other passengers. So we alighted. It was a very nice place, green, and of course it, it had a forest. Mm. So as he was contemplating what to do, why the bus suddenly was not working, mm. the 23 of us who alighted, we joined hands. We said, this, we are going for mission. Mm. And we cannot just take it for granted that it's a normal mechanical problem. Perhaps mm, the, the evil one system. is inter interfering mm -hmm. with this trip. So we joined hands and prayed. Mm -hmm. And also we shared on WhatsApp with the others. who, Because there's a group that had arrived, there's a group that was still in Nairobi work to come the following day or mm -hmm. in the night. Mm -hmm. So all of us were praying. Those were in Mumias, us were in the bus, and those were still in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And then when we finished the prayer, the driver started the bus and said, we push it. In less than five minutes, we're back on track. And it was no longer smoking. Yeah, there's no problem. Amen. Stopped. So we confirmed that that was now the evil one wanted to distract Resist us. Resist you. Yes. To spoil the spirit of mission. Mm. So we reached Mumia safely and had the week-long mission. And 60% of the church accepted the Amen. message. Amen. So we are hopeful for baptism this year. Amen. So that... Glory be to Jehovah. Yes, they able to serve the Lord with us. Amen. Yes. So, God listens. God listens. And there's nothing too small for him. No. If your baby can't sleep. Just pray. Just pray. Yes. I know that myself. I know that. <laughs> mm. Yes. Amen. 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 So what ushered you into the spirit of prayer? I've had experiences of my prayers answered. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, when you ha when, uh, when, whenever you, you speak to the Lord mm -hmm. or you hear testimonies in church, mm -hmm. you know, I attend so many prayer nights. Mm -hmm. and I always have testimony sessions. So when you listen and you're like, some, some of the testimonies even bring tears to your eyes. Mm -hmm. And then when it is your turn that mm -hmm. you're able to confirm to mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. that this is what... I said and spoke to the Lord, mm. and this is what the Lord did. Mm. Then it encourages me to pray. Amen. And uh, like this year, when uh, just last week, mm. coincidentally, the Lord 
made plans that I had back-to-back -back prayers. We had the first, we had the whole day prayer and fasting for the first Sabbath of the week, mm -hmm. this Feb. Mm -hmm. And then that night we had a prayer night, mm. or a Kesha, as some would call it, mm. with the public campus ministries, a group of young people who have a passion to pray. Mm. So we meet monthly in Nairobi. Mm. Like now we were in Nairobi, so next month we are going out of Nairobi. Mm. We'll be in Kisumu. And then the following morning, we had the women ministry prayer breakfast. Mm. Yes. So well, each time there is a call for prayer, mm. you find yourself willing to stand in the gap. Because you never you've know. seen the Lord. Because I've seen the Lord. Mm. Yes, and I'm able to testify about Not it. Not only in your life, but yeah. in the lives of, of others. others. Yes. Mm. So I'm able to. Amen. Yes. So what would you tell um, uh, your fellow young people? You, you, uh, you're not married. You no. Know? You're still young and uh, you're still in college, yet you are also busy with uh, uh, Col what is Col Potter? You said you are Col Potter. Col Potting is literature evangelism, mm. which is like uh, you reach out. It's mm. a silent preacher. Mm -hmm. The books are silent yes. preachers. Mm. So when you go into an office to maybe perhaps you get someone who you cannot go and like verbally preach to. Yes. You give them a book. Then mm. at their own silent time, mm. at their own alone time, they'll be able to open those pages and the Lord will reveal he himself to Amen. them through the book. Amen. So that is how we're able to reach others who perhaps would not be able to come into, into the church. Amen. Yes. And uh, you have enjoyed being a culprit. Yes, I have. Because it allows me also to read more. What is your your most memorable experience in Kolpata work? I went your most memorable encounter. My most the last one now. <laughs> <laughs> I I I took my I took books, yeah. and uh, I because we have to we are like mobile. Yeah. I walked with them, and everybody was like, no, 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 no. Everybody is saying no. You're always walking with books. Yes, mm -hmm. we always have books. And then I went into an office. Mm. I was not sure. That was my first time going into an office. Mm. And then I got there and whoever I find was so receptive and wanted the books. Mm. For, that was juicing and uh, 250 recipes because she, she had a sick mom. Mm. And then, because you, you again you have to like pray with them and encourage them and you have to know the content of your books. Mm. So this is memorable because this lady gets back to me and tells me that she has seen improvement. Mm. They are working. Mm. So I went through those gates and I was, you see that you hesitate because mm. most times... You prayed for the healing yeah, of his, uh, her mom. Of her mom. And mm. now, and uh, then when you go in there, the Lord speaks through you. Mm. Because you are able to encourage them mm -hmm. and tell them what they are supposed to do. Mm. So that they get the benefits of what it is that they are going to apply in their lifestyles. Have you ever had a nasty experience? Yeah, you sent away, like almost... <laughs> There are places you go to and you can't go past the gate. Mm. They call you hawkers. <laughs> Just because they look at your bag and they're seeing books. They said, no, 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 we don't allow these things here. Mm. So you go back and feel dejected. Mm. But then you pray because that is part of what you need to experience mm. so that it strengthens you. Mm. It encourages you, mm. yes, to continue despite that. So initially you feel like, hey, am I going to yeah, at some <laughs> be embarrassed <laughs> like this again? Yeah, at some point you feel like, Am I doing the right thing? Mm. Then you pray and talk to the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, do this just mm. for a confirmation that this is actually what you want me to do. <laughs> so even for your book's work, you have to keep praying. You have to keep praying, mm. yes. Because mm. the, uh, the devil does not want this book to reach certain people because he knows when I take steps to Christ into this office to so and so, and this person will learn the basic steps to meeting Christ, then this is, he'll have lost. So he'll have to hinder you. Mm. But then when you pray, the Lord removes all those barriers. Mm. And that book will reach to the soul that the Lord appointed. That book was printed for. Amen. Yes. So what would you like to tell our viewer before we, we pray and close? What would uh, tell our viewers is that uh, with regard to Romans 8.35, mm -hmm. where the promise is that there's nothing that happens to you in this world 
that can separate you from the love of Christ. Mm. God loves each one of us and would have even died even if you are the only person on this earth. Amen. So I know we have different challenges. Mm. We have viewers, perhaps you may be going through something that you are not hopeful mm. that will, will come to pass. But trust in the Lord, pray about it. If you're not able to pray, have a group of friends that you can pray with mm. so that when you're down, you're able to tell them, Today, lady, I'm going through this and I'm not feeling strong enough to pray so mm. that I can pray for you. Yeah. Some prayers happen because he stood in the gap, just like Job, his friends, his, prayer, his, his, his condition changed when he prayed for his friends. Amen. So that is my encouragement that keep praying, even if it doesn't happen. Mm. Sometimes we pray, but it will not come to pass at your time when you want it. It will come to pass at the Lord's timing and the Lord is never late. I like that, dear viewer that Job's condition changed, the Bible says, when he prayed for his friends. Pray not only for yourself, and if you do not know this God, know that he's real. Mm -hmm. Should you find yourself in need, just call upon him. He says in the book of uh, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, he says, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you never knew. Mm -hmm. When you begin to know God, every day will be a day of miracle. Because every time that you call upon him, you will see what God does. You will see it in others. You'll see it in your life. And for you to have uh, a life, a prayer life, you must surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he also says in, 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 uh, I, um, in Psalms 66 and verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. So we need to stop sinning. We need to walk with Christ. We need to be like Abraham. Talk mm -hmm. to God. Talk to God about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. He hears and he loves to be your friend because he loves you. May God bless you, dear viewer. Thank you st for staying in us. It is urgent to give your life to the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.